Hello, so let's return to this Dow Jones Industrials divided by the gold price, one ounce of, of gold. And just let's uh, reinforce what we discussed in the earlier segment. We can see, we know that we want to be in stocks in the spring of the cycle because the stock market is going to do very well because that's the period when uh, the economy starts to blossom again. And we know we want to sell our stocks at the end of spring because we're going in to go into the inflationary summer and move out of stocks and at that time we move into gold during the inflationary summer. Then we want to sell our gold at the end of summer, and we saw it right here in 1980. We want to sell our gold and go back into stocks, the general stock market, because we know that the autumn is a period when stocks, bonds and real estate, and particularly stocks, do exceptionally well in the cycle. And you can see that going back to the previous autumn cycle, and that of course is a 21, 29, uh, roaring 20s bull market. And you can see at that stage, the gold price here is fixed at $20.67, but you can see that stocks are booming and they go to an 18.4 relationship, 18.4 ounces of gold to buy the Dow Jones Industrials right at the peak of the stock market at the end of August 1929. So in winter we go back into gold because everybody is frightened by the winter because debt is being wrung out of the system, creating tremendous problems in the financial uh, services area. The banking system is in dire straits during that time. Between 1929 and 1933, 10,000 US banks failed and um, so people moved to gold. Everybody was moving to gold after the 29 peak. However, we only came down to a two to one relationship. In fact, it, because gold price was fixed, $20.67 an ounce to buy the Dow, and the Dow bottomed here in July 1932 at 41 points. So it was a two to one relationship here. However, I truly believe that that relationship would have been much lower had the Dow, had gold been allowed to float, had the price been free. Because we know during this great debacle when the banking system was collapsing in the 30s, everybody was moving to gold. So much so that uh, just before Hoover left office, his Secretary of the Treasury said to him, we don't have the gold to back the dollar, it's all gone. And so what the first thing that Roosevelt did when he became president was confiscate all the American gold that they had hoarded because they were so frightened by the failing of the banking system and put and replenish the treasury with that. So we know that there was a massive run to gold during this period, but the price was fixed. However, we come back here to the end of autumn this time, which was in July 1999. Actually, the stock market, the Dow peaked in um, January 2000 at 11,750. So we know at this period, it's time to buy gold because we know again, we're gonna have a tremendous pressure put on the financial system because of the debt that's been accumulated, particularly during this period of time. So people move to gold out of fear. And as I said, we've now come down to a seven to one relationship. Seven ounces of gold to buy the Dow Jones Industrials. Where is this going? Where is it going to bottom? Well, we believe that the bottom is going to be substantially below the two previous lows, which are about a one-to-one -one relationship. We think, because this high was so extreme here, that we will also get an extreme low. And the low that we are anticipating will be something like one quarter of an ounce of gold to buy the Dow Jones Industrials. That is 1,000 on the Dow and 4,000 for an ounce of gold. Thank you very much.